It's a tale as old as time, the Rolex Submariner versus the Omega Seamaster, but this is the green edition. So let's see who wins this versus battle. Here we go. All right, so everyone, here we go. We got a very loose scoring system between the two. I just made it up uh, myself, and maybe I'm gonna build on this system. Maybe I'm gonna do another system if we ever do any more versus videos. But first we have the design category. Next, we're gonna go on to the movement. Then we're gonna go on to the build quality. Then we're gonna do comfort and wearability in one category. Then the next one will be price, value retention, and maybe tradability. And finally, the last category is going to be WECP. And I'll let you know what that means when we get there. So first category, we're going to the design. And uh, of course, the Rolex here is a classic uh, design. We have triangle at the 12 o'clock indices, circles and dashes with the iconic Cyclops for the date at 3 o'clock. Everybody knows what this piece looks like. We have a ceramic green, a bezel going on over here and I would think the more interesting design of course this is very classic the more interesting design would go to the Omega here with a zirconium dial with the waves laser etched the hands are a little divisive I've seen people who don't like the hands who like the hands I don't mind the hands I think it fits the watch it just gives another interesting element to the design and I forget which one it is, but I think the minute hand, the loom is green and everything else, uh, the loom is blue. I tried to get a loom shot later, but uh, in the studio here, I can't make it dark and the loom won't show up anyway. But some divisive points on the Omega here would be, of course, the helium escape valve. I've read a lot of comments on the forums and everywhere that, oh, if they just didn't have the helium escape valve, it would be so much better. But this is what a C, uh, this is what a Seamaster is. It's a dive watch with a helium escape valve. And you know, if they put it at the nine o'clock, that would just be a little more weird, but I think it works with the design element of it. So as for design wise, of course you have a more classic look. This will look classic 20, 30, 40 years down the road. This one, I think it looks very modern. It looks like it fits today. But even if you look at some of the older Seamaster designs and just some of the older pictures, they don't, in my opinion, age that well. So as for the design wise, I do feel that the Seamaster is a lot more interesting. It is a lot more modern. Like I said, I'm not sure if we can stand the test of time, but if we're looking at a watch today, I just think this has so many more uh, interesting elements the kind of scallop uh, bezel that it has here and has a lot more lines and curves and just a lot more interesting elements than the uh, Rolex here so as for the design I'm gonna go with the Seamaster here next category is the movement in the Rolex we have the caliber 3235 70 hours of power reserve uh, plus two minus two seconds per day chronometer certified superlative chronometer certified and with a 70 hour power reserve and for the Omega here we have the caliber 8800 movement 55 hours of power reserve and we have uh, minus zero to plus five seconds per day meta certified so as for these movements here this one may be more accurate and it has maybe more um, magnetic resistance here but for the casual even for the enthusiast i believe that um, a longer power reserve is more important and because this some of the longer power reserves let's say from seiko it's very inaccurate but a plus two minus two 70 hours of power reserve takes the cake for me so for the movement i'm going to go ahead and give it to the submariner the next category we have here is the build quality. These, both these watches have very solid construction. I mean, they can take a beating. They're meant to be dive watches and they both can go 300 meters into the ocean, into the sea. But 
A couple of things that I have, of course, this watch is double the price, but this watch is built very well too. One of the things that I have here, let me go ahead and switch the microphone real quick. So this watch, let's listen to the bezel action here. It sounds a little bit hollow to me and it feels like, yeah, that's what it is. It sounds hollow. It, it clicks fine, but out of all the watches that I do have, I mean, I have a Tudor and I have this. Of course, this has a better bezel action than a Seiko or something like that, but between Tudor and Rolex, let's listen to the Rolex here. This is a tight, crisp 120 click bezel that just sounds amazing. I could spin this all day and never get tired of it. But every time I do spin this Omega here, I cringe a little bit because it just doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound and feel like it's from a well-made watch. So I guess that's, you know, that's a big, that's a big part of the build quality for me is the bezel action. I know it's a very small part of it, but I mean, I can't go through the whole build and, you know, break everything down what's better made but bezel action we have for the rolex one of the things i would really like to point out on this seamaster here is that the positions of the crown when you unscrew it it's not very pronounced like i had an issue earlier where i believe that i was between positions but i didn't realize it i was trying to wind the watch up but it wasn't moving and then i think i caught it in between the date and the hour and well i could tell immediately once i started moving it like something was wrong i felt it a little like grainy so when i clicked it back in um i could i i thought it was okay but then i was turning the i pulled it all the way out and i started to turn the um the crown and the date flipped at like nine o'clock and I was like, hmm, that's not right. And then I kind of messed around with it some more and then it was, it, it flipped back to how it's supposed to be at 12 o'clock. And then I took it into the, um, the Omega Boutique here and they looked at it. They said, I don't really know what happened, but they couldn't see anything wrong. They were like, you can send it in if you want, but it hasn't happened since. But I think I just got caught in between the date and the, the time one, but... You know, I've had a lot of watches and I never really had that thing happen to me where I got caught in between positions. So that's one of the things that I don't like about this. This is probably maybe for the movement or just the build quality. The difference is with the Rolex, it just pops. Like, you know where you are. Like, right there, you know you're out here and you know you're at the winding position. One click, this is for the date. Another click, you even got to pull it out pretty hard to get there you know you're not going to get there on accident which for um the omega even when i'm trying to just wind it i'm not exactly sure it's out right now i don't know if it popped out yet but so what i've been doing i've been pulling it out to the date position and then putting it back and then i'm winding it every single time just so i don't get it caught too close too far i'm not I'm not sure what's going on here, but that's just part of the build quality. So hands down, of course, this is double, but the build quality does go to the Submariner here. Next, as for comfort and wearability, for me, well, I don't have the OEM um, bracelet for this watch. I got uh, the Omega uh, mesh bracelet here, and I also do have the rubber strap that I made a bunch of reviews on. I'll link it in the card above, but... On the rubber strap, it is a great watch to wear. And on this mesh bracelet, it is also great. The only thing that these uh, straps don't have is the micro adjustability. The OEM bracelet does, but the OEM bracelet is very thick. It doesn't taper. And sometimes the styling of it doesn't look that great to me. That's something that I really hope that Omega will update in the future is I think that this one is, this watch is also due for an update as well, but I believe just in my opinion, they're going to go for the Planet Ocean first, then maybe this is next. But they got a bunch of other uh, watches in their lineup that they're going to need to update. So the lack of 
micro adjust on these bracelets that I have with it versus the Oyster bracelet. If you don't know about the Oyster bracelet, it's one of the most comfortable bracelets you could you could ever have second to the Jubilee bracelet uh, that Rolex makes, but we have the diver's extension uh, glide lock here in and out 20 millimeters for the perfect, perfect fitted watch here. So for wearability and comfort, we're going with the Rolex again. And the next category we have here is value and price and just value retention, tradeability, whatever you want to call it. So of course the Seamaster here is a lot more affordable. When I bought this watch, this was, I bought this watch in, I want to say December of 22 on the rubber strap, but I also added the deployant class, which added almost like four or $500 to it. So my rubber strap does have a clasp just like this and it, it adds, it adds a lot to it. I think it, I think it just um, makes it a little more elegant, but I was in it for around 5,500 with that upgrade. If I didn't upgrade, I think it would have been around 5,200. So, um, but the price is right now on bracelet is 5,900. So these, these are creeping up and they're creeping up quickly, but I've been toying with selling this watch. I got an offer from watch finder for this watch. Actually, it was just this watch on the rubber strap and they're offering 3,500, which is terrible for value retention. When I bought it in 2022, this is when this one first came out, it was trading right about retail, maybe a few months before that I was trading above retail, but there is no Seamaster model that does trade above retail. So you're taking a hit here um yeah thirty five hundred dollars from watch finder but if you sell it on the uh forums or wherever you want to sell it maybe you get 40 um 4200 maybe maybe 4500 i'm gonna try to if i do sell this i'm gonna try to get around 4500 with the mesh bracelet and the um upgrades to the rubber strap so value retention this one does not hold its value well at all everybody knows about how well Rolex retains their value. To me, that's all I really care about. I don't really care if it goes up. I just would like it to retain its value because if I do end up selling it, because for me, I, I would love to keep all my watches, but I can't. I have to move on from watches so I can bring in more, bring in more for the channel and bring in more just for me because I want to experience more watches. But, um, you know, maybe this is about 10, 11,000 after taxes. I've seen maybe people selling for like 14 or 15. So of course the value, value for money, secondhand, this one wins. Value for just anything, resale. Um, yeah, if you can get it from your authorized dealer, I would go ahead and try it. I'm gonna do a little experiment on, uh, on a trip that I have upcoming. I'm gonna try to get a, I'm gonna try to walk into an authorized dealer ask them for a watch and see what they say, you know, cause I have history for all the authorized dealers here. So, I mean, they all know me, even, even the people who aren't my salespeople, they know me as well. Cause like I, I go there, I used to go there kind of a lot. So I'm just going to try to go in cold in an authorized dealer. I'm not going to ask for the most expensive watch. I'm going to ask them for maybe a no dates, a Mariner, maybe a air King, maybe a regular color OP, not the green one and see what they say. You know, but that's going to be a spam for later. But of course, value, value retention, go with this. If you want value for money, go with this secondhand. Maybe you might get it for under 4000 That's a great value, great watch for that price. But if you can get this for retail from an authorized dealer, go for it. If you're buying it gray or, um, you know, secondhand and you're paying fourteen, fifteen thousand, dollars I'm not sure if any value is there for this watch. And finally, the category WECP, which would be watch enthusiast cool points. If you're going to a red bar event, if you're going to a watch meetup, and if you're just going around to uh, people who love to talk about watches, of course, when you show them this, you'll be like, oh, wow, nice, nice Mariner. But I think if you come up and show them this, there'll be a lot more conversation about this, especially in this configuration. 
you know, this is a dial that is relatively new and people haven't seen. So I think somebody will come up and talk to you about this watch. They're going to want to try it on because they've probably never seen this uh, mesh bracelet here. And I think you're going to get a lot more watch enthusiast cool points coming to an event with this watch. But that's just a fun category that I just came up with here. Of course, this is more classic. This is more well-known. But this one is going to start uh, more conversations here. One of the reasons why I did get this strap, I saw... Um, one of my sister's friends wearing, I think he had the black one and he had the, um, he had the mesh strap on this and I just went up to him, started talking and you know, that's how you get it. I was at the time, I think I was wearing my, um, my sky dweller, which we were talking about more, but the conversation went more towards his Omega and his mesh bracelet, which it wasn't a, he's, I think it was like a young hands bracelet. Because it was a little more gray. I think it was made in titanium as well, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, like um, that's how I ended up getting this strap for my watch because I went up to somebody who had an Omega, who had a mesh bracelet. I don't, I don't know if we would have started chatting if um, he wasn't wearing it. So definitely more watch enthusiast cool points with this one. Okay, so if we tally everything up, I would say the Rolex is... The winner and the Omega comes in at a very close second. But thanks again for watching another episode of Hawaiian Horology, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shoots!